Hey Masters, I have a special opportunity for 14 people. That's right, only 14 people. I am about to launch my best camp yet, the Mindset Listings Boot Camp. This is all about coaching and training. This is a weekly call. If you guys have been in my camps before, you know it is engaging, guys. We get a ton of information and I get everybody engaged. If you don't want to be engaged, this is not the camp for you. You're going to get everything that you normally get, all my scripts, all my marketing, all my follow-up plans, all my voicemails, anything that I have that's helping me generate business is yours, okay, guys? And we're bringing it to the next level because you're going to still have your regular weekly role play partners. You're also going to have access to me lead generating live on Facebook in a private community. And I want all of us to start doing live lead gen. And we're going to do it as a community. We're going to hold each other accountable and it's going to be phenomenal. Listen, here's the thing. I only have 14 seats. And here's the other crazy thing. It's only $1.99 a month. Can you believe that? $1.99 a month, 14 seats. It might not even be available now, to be honest with you, because it's going to be a week before this interview is released. However, if it's still available and you're committed 100%, just go to davidihill.com or xfbootcamp.com. The Mindset Listings Bootcamp, xfbootcamp.com. You rock. Enjoy the show. Get ready for one more sale. Inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field. Now, join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet. We have to be value creators constantly in the sales process, not just when they get your product or service, but throughout every step of the sales process. Because if we don't, buyers disengage. Today's buyers want value immediately. So what we do is we give value right away before we ask for a thing. Now, in my case, it might be an article, a white paper, an insight, a blog, an ebook, an infographic, something based on my research that I know you would find value in. I give you that, and then I start asking you questions. Hey, Masters. Welcome to episode number 55 of Path to Mastery. And we have a special treat for you this week. Listen, forget about competing for sales, okay? You're going to start dominating your sales. And that is what David Hoffeld, the author of The Science of Selling, is going to talk to us about today. Man, he has strategies and techniques that are science-based. I mean, these things work. And the guy's a machine. I mean, this is probably one of the best interviews that I have done from a perspective of just the amount of of meat and potatoes and and solid content we're going to get from this interview. I mean, you got to listen to this thing over and over. I've listened to it three times now and I'm actually going like he's got the six steps, guys, the six commitments to close the sale, meaning every one of these commitments has to be in place before we go for a close. I actually wrote them down on an index card and I'm going to keep this index card. Like whenever I go meet with somebody now on a listing appointment, I'm going to make sure that little index card is in the folder so that I can glance down and make sure that I've gone through every single step before I'm going for the close. I absolutely love this interview. And he talks to us about, I know we've all heard that the close should come as a natural progression and absolutely. Uh, But when you put these six steps in place, then it will come as a natural progression. He also talks to us about that that little voice in our minds that we always talk about. You know, the, the, the voice that you just said, what little voice? Yes, exactly. That little voice, the one that said, what voice? Exactly. That's the guy that talks to us. We talk about that and how to eliminate that and how to get beyond that, my friend. So listen, awesome interview. Really enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I just want to remind you that, again, we, we do real estate, central Massachusetts. If you look at the state of Massachusetts, we're like right in the center. We'd love to help you with your referrals. And, and, and you know, we do a phenomenal job. I don't just say, you know, we do a phenomenal job. I mean, we really, our goal is because of our systems and our structure and our team and the support we have, we're able to offer a really high level service. And I'll tell you what, if for some reason we can't, 
then um, we're going to make it right. I mean, for, you know, here, here's the thing. You send me a referral. We can't do it. We'll pay you double. How's that? How's that sound for putting my money where my mouth is, right? So, you know, that's how committed we are. So anyway, we'd love to do some referrals with you, but enough about me. Get back to David Hoffeld. This interview is phenomenal, guys. He's going to teach us not just to sell, but to dominate in sales. You guys rock. Enjoy the interview. Hey, Masters, welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we have David Hoffeld with us. And David is the author of the brand new book, The Science of Selling. Um, he's also uh, the CEO and chief sales trainer at Hoffert Group, which is one of the nation's top research-based uh, consulting firms. David, hey, thanks for joining us, man. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, definitely. And hey, tell us first off the book, is uh, The Science of Selling. So we want to know more. Tell us about that book. The Science of Selling is really a different kind of sales book. What it is, it's based on my more than decade of research into the science behind selling. And when I say science, I literally mean science. We look at uh, disciplines like social psychology, cognitive neuroscience, social neuroscience, behavioral economics. We literally read academic journals to understand how our brains make choices and the factors that influence what we say, how we act, and what we decide to buy. And so the book is based on thousands of scientific studies in this area, but it's very practical, easy to understand, and it's very actionable. So as soon as you put that book down, you're able to leverage these real-world sales strategies to help you be more effective. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna, I want to get back to you that. First, fill us uh, in on some of the gaps about yourself, maybe how you got into sales, where you started from 25 years ago to today. All right, well, take me back in time here. Let's see, you know, I got into sales probably like most people, at least that are as old as me or older, and that is by accident. I had just graduated with my master's degree and I needed to get a job for the summer, and so I went to the newspaper um, and uh, looked for a job, and I saw a sales position that said $100,000 a year, no experience necessary. And I thought, well, this is great because I have no experience, and I would love to make $100,000 a year. So I went and applied, and I got the job, and I fell in love. Uh, I fell in love with the idea of selling and, and transform my life. I began to make obscene amounts of money and really try to get good. And so I became the top salesperson at numerous companies, and I got promoted to be a sales manager, director of sales, and finally a VP of sales for one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. And then I I stumbled onto this science during that period, reading these journals, and I began to apply them just one at a time, slowly, and I began to get results. And it helped me sell more, and it helped the team I was working with sell more. And then back in 2009 of January, I launched my firm, Huffell Group, and we are science-based. If we can't prove it with objective, verifiably effective, real-world science, uh, we'll let you know. It's not opinion-based, not anecdotal-based. It's a different kind of sales training. It's grounded in the reality of science, and the results speak for themselves. We've helped companies achieve some very dramatic increases in sales, but it all started with me. I mean, I, I love selling. This is what I'm obsessed with. I'm obsessed with doing this. I think about it night and day. I, sometimes I even dream about it. Uh, I love it. I love every minute of it. So it sounds like it, my friend. And, and the other thing, too, with the experience, uh, you know, interestingly enough, I started 17 years old. I saw an ad for same thing, make $100,000 a week, you know, no experience necessary, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I went and uh, it was it was Kirby. I don't know if you remember those oh, those thousand yeah. dollar vacuum cleaners yeah, yeah, back then. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you, I was not very successful at that, but it was my first experience cold calling. And, uh, and it, yep. it, it was a, it was a great learning experience for me. So let's talk now about the book, though, The Science of Selling. So when you talk about the science now, so we're not talking about theory, right? We're talking about this is proven. So I wanted you to dig deeper on that. Like, what exactly does that mean? Like, why do our listeners want to pay attention to the science of it, like behind it? Yes, because the, the science allows you to know what behaviors will help you sell more. Here's the reality. There's been many studies. I'll share with you one from the Harvard Business Review that they published that found that when they studied real salespeople on real sales calls and they analyzed the behaviors they were, they were utilizing, they found that 63% of the salespeople studied, so the majority of them regularly on those sales calls behaved in ways that drove down the likelihood of the sale. Only 37% were consistently effective. 
And so the question becomes, how do you know what sales behaviors are helping you sell versus hindering you from selling? And the beautiful thing is we now have an ocean of research. I mean, thousands and thousands of studies, decades now that we can look at that is objective, that discloses what reality is, that understands how our potential customers' brains make buying decisions. And the closer your way of selling is aligned with how they make buying decisions, the more effective you will be. Success or failure is literally as simple as that. And Mm. so the wonderful thing is now, armed with this scientific data, we can improve any salesperson's performance. And like I mentioned, when I say science, I literally mean science. I'm not saying I went and conducted a survey of 100 people. I'm not talking about any nonsense like that. I'm saying real, verifiably effective science, meaning we cite in the book, for example. It's very practical. But let's say you want to say, well, why do you tell us to ask questions in this way? We have hundreds, over 400 different footnotes in the book to academic journals. So if you say, I want to get into the research behind what you suggest, though we disclose it in the book, if you say, I want to read it for myself, you can do that. It's not hidden. I don't have it locked away in my safe, you know, here at my Mm. office. You can verify everything we show you. So it's very transparent. And that's a new idea in sales because most of it, I say it's, We're trying to guess our way to success. It's very much faith-based. Nothing wrong with faith, but in some areas you don't need it, and sales is one of them. We have this wealth of science we can leverage. Let me jump in for a second. And I love when you say these new times with our new president coming on and everything else going on, we Mm -hmm. talk about the new fact-checking. You're hearing a lot more about that. So when when I'm listening to you, that's what I'm thinking, saying, okay, I can go verify. I can... I can, I can check all this and make sure that, yeah, this stuff is, is working. But what I want to actually go backwards, though. And you said there are 67, I think you said 67 ways that drive our sales down or maybe prevent us from being successful. And then there were, what, 30, uh, I'm assuming it's 33 ways? And, yeah, in the in this study from the Harvard Business Review, Harvard they found Business that 63% Review. of the salespeople regularly behaved in ways that drove down performance. Got, okay, got Only it. 37% were consistently effective. Okay, so let's talk about some of the, I want I want us, our listeners to then like, so what are some of those things? Let's talk about in those the 63%, like what are the top three things that would prevent or hinder us from being more successful? Sure. Unfortunately, there's a lot. So there is really an astonishing gap. Uh, This is one of the alarming things that I stumbled on early on in my research between science and sales practices. Some of the things we get very right, and every top salesperson knows that some things help us, but a lot of times we guess wrong. Let me give you one big example, and that is closing. This is probably, if not the biggest, one of the biggest ones, though there are other culprits too. Typically, we think about closing as a big commitment that happens at the end of the sale. The problem with that is when you look at every piece of research, and I mean thousands of studies that analyze how the brain makes a buying decision, it does not make a buying decision at the end of a persuasive message. What every piece of research shows is that your brain and my brain, when we're listening to a sales presentation or any presentation for that matter, we're making a decision throughout the message. We're saying yes to certain things, no to certain things, and at the end, that is manifested in the yes or no to you know moving forward in whatever way we're being asked. What you just said, and, and, I, and I so agree with what you just said, because and this is one of the biggest challenges I see, Dave, is in real estate sales, people are like, I'm not sure when should I close. Do I want to close now? Should I wait till the end? Am I closing too early? So how do you know? Yes, that's a great question. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's the question no one can answer until now. Here's when you know. So what we found is there are certain commitments that our brains must make 100% of the time when you're selling real estate, you're selling software, selling Girl Scout cookies door to door. It doesn't matter. There's certain things our brain steps, our mental steps our brain has to go through for us to say yes to buying a product or service. And so when do you ask for the sale? Once you've gotten those commitments, that you've guided them through the mental steps. So the question is, when is my buyer ready to buy, not when should I close the sale? So we look at the buyer, and once we know, we know what these commitments are now, and it's a game changer. I believe this is one of the biggest breakthroughs in sales 
understanding how our brains make choices, these incremental commitments that guide us on a natural progression of consent and advance the sale. So, and because we know what these are, we can align our sales processes with them. So give us, what, what are these commitments? Let's, I want right. to know these commitments. We call them in the book, the six whys. Basically, the way we frame them so they're easy to understand and apply is six questions that each begin with the word why. The first one is the foundational one of all selling, which is why change. This is the biggest competitor any of us have as sales professionals. We've all lost more business to nothing than to someone. So we have to address the need for change. Why should someone say, I need to make a change? Because until they do, everything we do as a sales professional is irrelevant. The second one, we can go into these as much in detail as you want how to answer them, but the second one real quickly is why now? Why should they do something now? Third, why your industry solution, right? Why should I use a real estate agent in this scenario versus just trying to sell the house myself? Why can't I try to find the house myself? Why do I need you? Why you and your company? Why, why should I use you? Why your product or service? Why should I choose that? And then finally, why spend the money? Listen, most companies, most people, there's a limited amount of budget. If they say yes to you, they're saying no to something else. So, for example, we had a client who had just ran into this. They were selling a um, really powerful CRM software system to an organization. But the organization said, we want to move forward with this, but we only have enough money to either buy your system or some machinery for our factory. That's all we have the funds for this year. So now my client is competing against machinery for a factory. So why should they spend the money with you? And the great news is there's clear answers to each of these, but these are the six commitments that if people don't make even one of them, the buying process breaks down and they will never say yes. Hmm. You are listening to One More Sale. I'm going to read them back. So it's why change? Why now? Why you're the industry solution? Why your industry why solution? Why your industry, right? got it. Why choose you? Is that what you'd said? So why, why me, you and your company? Yep. And why company. you and your company? And then my product. Why my product and service? Was that the last one? Uh, that's number five. And then number six was why spend the money? Why should I buy with you versus buying something else even totally unrelated? Why should I spend the money on you? Why spend the else? money? Okay, so... Are you looking for all six or is, do you need three or is it four? What, what are your thoughts on that? Right. If any of these commitments is not made, uh, and then the buying process will never happen. Uh, it, never. So for, just think of any one. It doesn't matter which one we choose. So like, for example, number two, why now? If someone says yes to all the other five whys, but they say, and they're not committing to why now, they'll procrastinate, the sale will stall and often die. So all six of these are mission critical. Now, depending on the sales environment, there's different ways to obtain them. Someone might walk in and call you up, you know, as a real estate agent, and they already know they want to change, and they give you that commitment the second they talk to you on the phone. Other times, you might have to pull that out of them mm. and make a case for change. But you want to focus. This is what a sales process should be guided. What makes a productive sales process? It's when you guide people through these commitments, and here's why. It's how their brains are already wired to work, meaning these commitments are at play on every sales call, whether we actively engage them or not. So when we actively guide people through them, it guides them through their own buying process mentally, the mental steps, and it enables them to make a confident buying decision. These are brilliant, my friend. But when you say actively engage somebody, you said they're already present, but we have to actively engage. How do we do that? Yes. Yeah, so we want to ask for these commitments. Now, sometimes people might give that to you. So let's say they call you up and they, they say, yeah, we want to sell our house. OK, we, we definitely want to do that. And, um, you know, we want, we want a real estate agent. And so you already got that need for change. So, you, you know, you've already got your industry solution. Other times you have to pull that out of them. So I want active commitments. And so there's a number of ways to do that we talk about in the book. How do you prepare people for commitments? We use something called choice architecture, which is fascinating. It comes out of behavioral economics. It's how do I architect choices? So people are more likely to choose in my favor. How do I guide their brain, prepare their brain? And so we want active commitments. So for example, if I was on a sales call with you selling my training services, for example, I would want you to embrace the idea that science-based sales training is uh, beneficial. So for example, let's say I presented, I'll give you a real world what so, I would so use. So why don't we do, let's do this. Let's actually do a role play if you want. Why don't you, uh, you can reach out to me. I'm always looking to, for training and 
okay. helping take it to the next level, and I'll be one of your prospects. How's that sound? Excellent. Let's do it. So let's say that I've let's jump ahead though in the sales process so I can demonstrate a commitment here. Yeah. Let's say that I've presented to you about science based sales training, the validity of it. We've gone through you know, a while and you understand it. And then I would prepare you with what we call an involvement trial close that really primes the mind for a commitment. So we've gone through all this information and then I would say, does it make sense, David, why so many individuals just like you, when they investigate different types of sales training and once they learn about science-based sales training, sales training actually based on real science, that that's the training they choose moving forward. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. Are you bringing me through the sequence now? Yeah, so now I'm preparing you for the commitment. So that's a, pre- that's a preparing question, an involvement question. Now I'm going to go for the commitment. And I want to say, well, Dave, David, let me ask you, would you ever want any other type of training other than science-based sales training? So what you've essentially done was got me to acknowledge that I do want the science-based training in your first question. What I got you to acknowledge was that it makes sense why people just like you are choosing it. Now I'm going to ask you to commit. And I say, now would you ever want any other type of sales training other than that that was based on science. Now, the likelihood is you're going to say, well, no. Why? Because you just told me, I don't know, five seconds ago, that it makes sense why people just like you are choosing science-based sales training. Now you have to go against what you just said, what other people are doing, and that makes a lot of sense. You see, so I'm preparing the brain. So I'm setting up, and I know it's hard when we do that cold. In a normal presentation, it would flow much more naturally because we would have been talking about this for you know, the last 20 minutes, but. Well, even that though, it was like my natural reaction was to say, yes, of course. Exactly. Um, Although I I stopped and and I wanted a question because we're obviously, we're doing an interview. So, okay, cool. So continue. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you. Yeah. So in a real sales environment, it's quite powerful. So commitments are the building blocks of the sale. And I'm like a pit bull when I'm selling or when I'm teaching others, we have to get our commitments. Why? Because not only does it tell you how you're doing, but it also lets you track with your buyer. And it's how your buyer's brains form buying decisions, small incremental commitments that guide them on a progression of consent. And naturally, they're literally the building blocks of a positive buying decision. So this is mission critical. Hmm. Okay, got it. So you bring me through this process, and now it's time to close. What, what does your close sound like? Well, see, the close for me is relatively easy because I look at closing as something that's happening throughout the whole sale. And I don't mean ABC always be closing nonsense. I'm talking literally based on science. So what I'm saying is I'm getting you incremental commitments. So I'm moving you. And so at the end of the sales call, right, when I'm ready to ask for your business, you've already made a series of commitments. Now the logical next step is for you to move forward. So I'll ask a closing question or sometimes it's even an assumptive statement. Like, well, the next step would be for me to send you an agreement and then I'll just assume the close. Why? Because you're ready to buy. Yeah. Got it's it. a different way. I don't ask you for your business until you've given me my commitments because at that point, I know now you are ready to buy. Rather than trying to guessing when I should close, I base it all on my buyer. So, I mean, for them, it's the next logical step is just to, obviously to move forward. How are they going to say no? Think about it. If they said they want to make a change, they want to do it now, they want my industry solution, they only want me and my company, they only want my product, and they want it, they see the validity of spending the money on this project, why would they say no? The answer is there's no reason. If you're talking to a qualified buyer, has the means and authority to make the buying decision, it's a done deal if you got those commitments. Yeah, I think you nailed it too when you said qualified because yes, <laughs> that's the key. Absolutely. Qualified absolutely. and motivated. So let's talk about some of the biggest challenges. What are some of the biggest challenges, Dave, you're seeing now salespeople are having? You know, one of the big ones a lot of people are asking me about is how do I engage buyers, potential customers that may or may not even know you exist? So how do you interrupt them? How do you do that? You know, there's all kind of thoughts on it. I'll share what we teach clients and what we do at my firm. Anytime we interrupt someone or we try to engage someone for the first time, even if we're not interrupting them, we want to leverage a scientific principle called reciprocity. Here's what it is. Reciprocity says that we repay others for what they've done for us. So here's what we will never do. I'll give you a real world example. We would never call you up and say, hey, David, you know, I did some research on your company. And I think that, you know, with some of the new growth initiatives that you have going on, I think that we might really be able to provide some training that could really help you. If you have a few minutes, I can ask you some questions and we can kind of find out together if we might be able to help you or not. We would never do that. Here's why it doesn't work because you're a busy guy. You're not going to want to spend your time fishing for value. You're not going to want to spend 30 minutes with me to see if I can help you. 
So today's buyers want value immediately. So what we do is we give value right away before we ask for a thing. Now, in my case, it might be an article, a white paper, an insight, a blog, an ebook, an infographic, something based on my research that I know you would find value in. I give you that, and then I start asking you questions. Why? Reciprocity says that you're more likely now to answer my questions because I've just given you something that you find meaningful value in, and you reciprocate now by giving me your time and answering my questions and being honest. That allows me to build more value, trust, and now be able to show you how I can help you in some meaningful ways. So I always interrupt with value. So in other words, don't tell people you can help them. Show them. Give them something that demonstrates your expertise, that gives them meaningful value. Give it to them for free, though if you can, assign a monetary value. So for example, I might say, you know, David, I'm gonna, I want to give you our report that we just came out with that talks about five science-based strategies that will help reduce any mishires on sales in the future. Now, normally I sell this report on our website for $399, but I wanted to give it to you at no cost because rather than tell you how we can help you make good hires, I'd rather just show you so you can see for yourself. Now, once you accept that, boom, now you're extremely likely to answer my questions when I say, so how many salespeople are you considering hiring uh, David next year? in 2017. You know, and so now we're in a dialogue. Why? Because you just accepted something from me. And so I leverage reciprocity in my favor. I begin by giving, then I ask. Most of the time in sales, we do it the opposite way and we get pushed off. So you have to give value constantly. And if people aren't returning your calls, if they're not responding to your emails and voicemails, there's a reason why we talk about this in the book, they don't perceive enough value. We have to be value creators constantly in the sales process, not just when they get your product or service, but throughout every step of the sales process. Because if we don't, buyers disengage. Mm. All right, love it. So bring in value. So what, Dave, right now is, is the biggest misconception when people hear your book, Science Selling? Boy, the biggest misconception, I think, is that it's going to be complicated or it's going to be a textbook or it's going to be like going back to college or a master's. And none of that is true. My book is extremely practical. And the great thing is, you know, the science can be complex, but we make it simple. So we connect the dots between science and real world sales strategies because I'm not about theory. Uh, as I, hopefully our, our listeners can tell by uh, hearing me here in a few minutes, if it doesn't work in the real world, I have no time for it, which is why I have no time for conjecture or anecdotal sales training or sales ideas. I could care less about people's opinions. I want things that are going to make me and you more successful today. And that's what science does. It is a huge differentiator. Think about any profession that has embraced science. Instantly, they get better. And so this is mission critical. I believe this is an imperative for every organization because, listen, your competitors may already be embracing this. And if they are, it gives them an unfair advantage in the marketplace and will allow them to dominate. And that's what we're about. I hate competing. I want to dominate. And right now, science gives us a significant advantage, especially when our competitors are not leveraging it and they're selling in ways that are conflict with how the brain makes a buying decision. Mm, love it. A couple more questions, Dave. With relation to rejection, just you know, sales, we deal with a lot of people saying no, regardless of how great you are, still it, it's always a numbers game. How do people get beyond that? Or what would be your advice to somebody who's getting into sales and maybe things just aren't going great right now. I'm sure we've, I know I've had slumps. I'm assuming you have. How do you get through that? How do you keep moving forward? Yeah, one strategy that I would recommend that's a game changer in this area is when you fail, and that happens all the time in selling, when you go into a slump especially, don't view that as an indictment against you, meaning because you failed, you had a bad month, you didn't hit quota, that you are a failure. Instead, look at the failure as feedback right? That says, okay, I'm not doing something right. Something is clearly wrong here. I'm not achieving the results I could or should be. Why is that? Ask those questions instead of getting depressed or saying, boy, I'm no good at this. I'm no good at anything. You know, it doesn't lead anywhere productive. So instead say, what am I doing wrong? What do I need to change to get to that next level? Why am I not getting the results? Look for the issues that are hindering your success identify them, correct them. So always try to take steps forward, even when you're failing, by using the failure as feedback. Mm. If you look at it as feedback, you can leverage it to become successful. If you look at it as an indictment against you, nothing positive comes of that. It just pushes you down, it suppresses you, your motivation dies, 
and your career will dwindle out. So look at it as feedback. You know what else I take from what you just said is so many of us, we take it uh, personal when someone says no. And it, it's not, right? Is that what you're saying? It's not personal. It's, it's not about us. Uh, it, there's a lot of other factors. Yeah, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the call. But the reality is, even if they are rejecting you, someone says, hey, I just don't like you. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like your company. I don't like you, the way you look. Uh, who cares, right? You know, we got we to gotta toughen up, too, a little bit. You know, mm. making, being successful is hard. If, if it was easy, more people would be successful. So we got to say, listen, you know what? I'm going to use every feedback. Everything I get, I'm going to use as feedback to get better. So even if you are selling to a jerk, Right. And you hate this guy. And I want to say I'm going to use you to get better because sometimes on some sales calls you go, that was a waste of time. But you, every I look at everyone yeah. as a, a part of a ladder. Right. They're helping me get a little bit better. I'm always learning. Adopt that mentality. Yeah. I think John Maxwell says you're either failing or learning. Right. Yes. And I, I love that, too. And again, I, I agree with your feedback as the breakfast of champions. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to say, though, you know, nobody's ever said to me, you know, hey, I just don't like you. I don't like the way you look, I like the way you sound. So people are not going to say that to your face, your face. But the point of it is, is regardless, if that's even the case, we can't take it personal and we can't win them all. It's just, it's just not going to happen. So I want to uh, kind of wrap up. How do our listeners, David, get in touch with you? How did he get a copy of your book? Yeah, the book is available anywhere books are sold, bookstores. It's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can pick up a copy right now. There's also a Kindle version, an audio book as well. And you can learn more about my firm. We have a lot of great resources on our website, Huffeld, H-O-F-F-E-L-D, group.com. Uh, articles, blogs, white papers, videos, podcasts. You can learn about science-based selling and some of the really innovative sales workshops and e-learning that we have as well that can really take you to the next level. Excellent, my friend. And the final question is on our listener's path to sales mastery, what is the one thing you want them to take from this interview? That there is a science we can base sales on, that you don't have to guess your way to success, that anyone, regardless of how long you've been in sales, regardless of your success level right now, Anyone can get better by leveraging this science in their favor, and you can also better serve your potential customers as well. Hey, Masters, you guys know how important health and nutrition is to me. I just want to talk to you a little bit about products I use called AdvoCare. I've been using these products for about a year and a half now, you know, mostly just for energy. They've got a really awesome drink. It's called Spark. You know, if you want to check out anything, I would tell you, go check out the energy drink Spark. That's what I did for like I said, almost a year and a half without even trying any of their other products. And then this past January, uh, a bunch of us, January 4th, decided we were going to do the 24-day challenge, which is a 10-day cleanse and then 14 days of just really healthy eating, vitamins, uh, meal replacement, just awesome 24 days just to kind of get yourself on track and, and get into some right habits. So Richie Ryan did it with us. Guys, he lost Today's February 5th. I think he's at 24 pounds lost since January 4th. Melissa at our office uh, lost six pounds. Uh, Min at our office lost five pounds. Uh, guys, I mean, listen, th it's amazing. I, what, regardless, if your goal is losing weight, my goal wasn't losing weight. I did the challenge just so I could experience it. And, you know, I actually I lost a few pounds, but now I, I put some weight back on because I started using some of the supplements and the protein powder and all the other stuff. So now I've gained about three pounds of muscle and just feel awesome. My energy's through the roof. So whether you're looking for energy or you're looking for just wellness, I mean, they've got some amazing green products that I, I love taking before I go to bed. Or if you're looking for performance, athletic products, we've got the athletic performance products. And then just active, you know, if you're an active adult, uh, maybe getting a little little older in the age and you want to just keep everything working the right way and functioning. Listen, Gary Keller said it best. If you don't take care of your body, where are you going to live? And I, I just love that. So, hey, I just ask you to check out Advocate's products. I'm a distributor. So I'd love to help you talk to you about your nutrition and health goals. You go to LiveLongerSmarter.com. LiveLongerSmarter.com. You are listening to One More Sale with your host, David I. Hill, author of The Sales Playbook. Get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.